the last time that Republicans had a contested presidential primary was the year 2016. And though it seems sort of impossible to imagine now, the party was kind of divided about Trump's victory all the way to the convention floor. And you saw that no more clearly than when Senator Ted Cruz went to the podium in a primetime speaking slot, I might add, and refused to mention Trump's name during his convention speech. And boy, oh boy, did people notice. If you love our country and love your children as much as I know that you do, stand and speak and vote your conscience, vote for candidates up and down the ticket who you trust to defend our freedom. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless the United States of America. Prior to that moment, before all those just deafening boos, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump had been going at each other for months. Relations between these two men were not good. Trump regularly went after Ted Cruz's family during the primary. He weirdly and baselessly accused Cruz's father of playing a role in the Kennedy assassination. He insulted Cruz's wife, Heidi Cruz, for her appearance. And Senator Ted Cruz was quite obviously furious over it. Donald doesn't like strong women. Strong women scare Donald. I don't get angry often. But you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. But Ted Cruz was not an outlier that year. Other candidates running against Trump were also able to muster some amount of courage to speak out about him, to maybe even stand up to him, or at least his candidacy. Senator Marco Rubio was running against Trump in 2016, and this is what Marco Rubio had to say. Donald Trump is a con artist. Guys, we have a con artist as the front runner in the Republican Party. A con artist is about to take, take over the Republican Party and the conservative movement. We cannot allow the conservative movement to be taken over by a con artist. You all have friends that are thinking about voting for Donald Trump. Friends, do not let friends vote for con artists. So that was the tenor of things the last time Republicans had a contested primary. And what a difference eight years makes. Senator Marco Rubio, who spent a fair part of 2016 calling Donald Trump a con artist, has this week endorsed Donald Trump for president, despite the fact that Trump has now actually legally been proven to be a con artist by a federal judge. In September, Judge Arthur Angoron ruled that Trump was guilty of defrauding banks and defrauding insurance companies that he has been gaming the system. And that judge is right now, as we speak, deliberating how much money, likely millions and millions of dollars, Donald Trump must pay for his swindling. But Marco Rubio hasn't said anything about that con this time around. Meanwhile, Ted Cruz, who made some real waves back in 2016, calling out Trump's fear of strong women and urging Republicans to vote their conscience, Last night, Ted Cruz also endorsed Donald Trump for president, and he did so in the very same week that Mr. Trump is sitting in a New York courtroom, having been found civilly liable for def defamation of a woman strong enough to take Donald Trump to court, a woman that the civil court says Donald Trump sexually abused. But Senator Cruz had nothing to say about strong women or consciences this week. The moral judgments Republicans once made about Donald Trump apparently do not matter anymore. The fact that Donald Trump said 12 days ago, 12 days ago, Ted Cruz, he shouldn't even exist. I could have destroyed him. I kind of did destroy him in 2016, if you think about it. But then I let him live. Even that did not matter to Ted Cruz. What we are seeing right now is the near complete capitulation of the Republican Party to Donald Trump. In addition to those senators I just mentioned, Trump has locked up 23 other endorsements from Senate Republicans, probably the group of Republicans most at least inclined to be resistant to his lawlessness. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, for their part, have a collective zero Senate endorsements between them. Over in the House, Trump has endorsements from more than 100 members. Ron DeSantis, who served in the House, has five. 
Nikki Haley has won.